Lindsay McDonald wanted to ask about um, the uh, appearance with Jack White on SNL, which I watched, which is, that was a great appearance, man. And, and um, again, you know, the, your approach and at times the use of space is something I want to get into with you, but um, can you, can you, um, you know, just talk about what was that experience like being on SNL that for, that was the first time you were on the show, right? Second time. Oh, second, second time. time. Who were you on the, with first? Jack White. We actually oh. premiered in two, 2012 right. when I first joined the tour. And we actually premiered the bands on SNL. That was the first performance. Oh, and, wow. Oh, my God. And I talk about, um, I'm going to try to keep this short. At that time, 2012, even before 2012, my calendar, I was booked six months to a year in advance. I had four artists I was rotating. Tyler Kweli, I was just Tyler Kweli's hip hop um, MC, rapper from Brooklyn, New York. Right. I was his music director. I was playing with Ski Beats. And Ski Beats produced Jay Z's first record, Reasonable Doubt, the biggest hit, some of the big hits from that record. He had a group called um, The Senseis. I was I was in the house band the Senseis. We played for all of it. So it was it was Tyler Kweli, Ski Beats, Black Milk. I was touring with and Daisy Joplin. She plays a violin from the UK, but she lives in the States. So they all, well, Talib Kweli and Black Milk were inquiring about availability during a, a January, like the top of the year, or like before that, before that, because they both had records that came out. And um, the, the, the rest of 2011 goes by because I had, I had recorded with Jack White. We were originally supposed to work with Rizna from the Wu-Tang Clan, but Rizla canceled at the last minute. And oh. instead of Jack sending me back to New York, he was like, I got a couple solo songs we can work on. And from what I was told, that's what started Jack's solo career. Oh, wow. The rest of, the rest of 2011 goes by. I'm wondering what happened to that music. And then um, Third Man Records, Jack's team, they reached out to me and they wanted to know my availability for eight months to a year. I'm like, what is this all about? I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out, I have a couple tours and I'm trying to decide which one I'm going to do. But what's going on? And then Jack emailed me personally. And he was like, those tracks you played on, they're going to be on my solo album. Wow. I, I have this vision of touring with two bands. And the one band would be all female. The other band would be all guy. I want you to play an all male band. So basically, to make a long story short, I ended up doing Jack White, of course. But I had to go off radar. And I went off radar where I had to turn. I couldn't play any shows with nobody because I was rehearsing. The first time people seen me was on SNL with Jack White 2012. So we did that. And then fast forward last year, was it 2020? Yeah. 2020, randomly, I was on my way to Planet Fitness. And this is during the pandemic, you know, the pandemic. Right. And I was um I was on my way to the gym, but I had stopped by the mall and I get a FaceTime because me and Jack, Jack would text me. But this is the first time he FaceTimed me. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, the FaceTime? <laughs> so Jack, he was like, um, are you in a quiet place? Um, place? And I was like, well, I'm, in, I'm, I'm about to go to the gym. So I rushed out to my car, called him back on FaceTime. And he told me the artist that was scheduled to perform got kicked off. And, and, and he asked if I could join him, you know, to perform for SNL. But he was like, if you can... We, I need you to come rehearse tonight, and we had to get we had to get COVID test. Oh my! So God. it was a whole. It was crazy because at that time when the pandemic was was really hot. Yeah. You know, we all had to we had to see if we can get COVID COVID tests because at that time it was hard to get. Yeah. And we had to have we had to get this done like in a day's worth of time because they basically flew us out the not the following day but the next day after the following day. Um. So. And if one of the people who had to test it, or if, if we had to test it, who knows if if the if, we, if the, the performance would have happened. So it was like all of these. Oh my God. But I feel like the universe was with us and I feel like it, the universe wanted a message to be to deliver. So anyway, that and they flew us on a private jet to you know to, to New York and back. It was like it was it was like out of a dream, but it was really cool. But the but the thing was. Although we rehearsed, the day before we were still making up stuff on the spot. So everything what people are saying, 
those are like last minute decisions. So we still, although we rehearsed, we still was like, because when you when you on SNL live, what happens? It's like it's it's that's it. There's no can you start over. It's like people <laughs> right. see it live, so it's like all of these things. So it was it was just it was a lot of pressure, but it was magical. Oh so it, it was it was it was it was such a cool experience and. One of my favorite things that I've ever done in my career, just um, I had no idea that I was going to be on SNL during a pandemic where stuff was shut down. And you know what's crazy? We got to New York and I've, I've been in New York for years. I couldn't see, I couldn't go see nobody oh, because right, right. Pandemic, the chances pandemic. of you running to somebody, it was like, we had to like go there, be locked down, take tests. Anytime we go into NBC, it was, it was so much that could have, it, one thing that went wrong would have forfeited it. Right, right. So, oh my god. But yeah, that's that was my experience. So they flew you guys in from Nashville. Yeah. Private yeah. jet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. And it was. But you your, know what was? What's that? Say that. Say that one time. I, I mean, that's I was just going to say it was such a great appearance, and and the as from a playing standpoint, it was just really inspiring to watch. Um, just the way you guys were hitting it. Um, it was just great. Just killing. Thank you. Well, the crazy thing was, I didn't realize that everybody seemed to be at home. My phone, you know how you meet people and you just save them on your phone. You never reach out to them. Right. I mean, people like my heroes was reaching out to me. I had texts from Vinny, Will Kennedy, Narada, oh my god, got my number. Mike Portnoy, like people, like I don't even know how they got my number. I got <laughs> these DMs, and and I was like, man, was everybody at home watching this thing? It was just the response was just it was like a dream. So it was like you know when when I don't know if you've had had that fairy tale story as a kid, but I've had it before. Like one day you're gonna do something, and everybody's gonna see it or something like that. Right, and I. I that was that moment. I never thought I would have it, but it was, it, that was the moment that I've always wanted to have oh in, my in my career. 